It's Wednesday night. You know what that means. It's time for hashtag Gaw TV. Get your drinks ready. Get those smiles on. We're about to have some fun. Ooh. I was trying to make a cool slurpy going. Didn't work. <laughs> He's on that virtual roller coaster again. <laughs> I gotta warn y'all. I had a Red Bull tonight already. It's uh, it's gonna be wild. Lisa, first of all, how are you doing? Well, do we need to have a warning? Just warning. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I got the red I, slide. I'm doing great. Thanks, Val. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You look fabulous. Mickles, Pickles, Mickles, James. What you doing, girl? You traveling all over the place. I am doing good. How are you? I'm very well. I'm, I'm very shiny tonight. You no. Happy shiny people everywhere. Is that right? I was, was going to chime in with the harmony, but I got nervous. Oh, there we go. Hands. Damn it, those stupid yeah. copyrights. We could play that and have a dance break. We'll wait for that because we have someone waiting in the wings for you. But ladies, before oh, I, we get to that, I just have to say um, hello to everyone in the chat room, of course. That's our favorite part. But hello and thank you to those of you who took part in our store launch. As you know, GawTV.com is where you can go for all of our info, including a link to our store. We have such great merchandise. Thank you to Ian, by the way, our amazing designer and friend that made this possible for us. Cheers, Ian. Shout out to Ian. Cheers, Ian, good Ian. Win. Ian, good win. Yes. And we are so grateful that you guys were so quick to get the merch. And we so appreciate you sending in your photos using hashtag GawTV to show off that you're representing our brand. Ladies, that's pretty darn cool. We talked about having a having a merchandise store ages ago, but it's it's here. For sure, for sure. You know, and it was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Even just like picking cool logos and designs and narrowing it down. Like, but I yeah. love it. I love our stuff. Yeah, I, love I it. do too. Me yeah. too. I can't wait to get my fanny pack. I know. Fanny no. no. It was your. It was inspired by you, Lisa. Of course. <laughs> Stop. A fanny pack. What do they call it over in the UK? A bum, bum bag. Bum bag. Bum bag. Yes. Bum bag. Well, we have someone waiting in the wings, and I think you all know who I mean. I can't uh, wait. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's an actual, true life, real life girlfriend, a real grown ass woman. Uh, ladies, how do we even intro this this guest? Gosh, there's just so many words to describe her. We love her. <laughs> we love her so much. You're All waiting right. for me to drop some like drop some words off. <laughs> but she is she is amazing. She's amazing. She's an amazing friend. Um, an amazing wrestler. Um, super yes. talented. Um, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's. Yeah, so strong, so powerful, and so vocal and active, and always trying to yeah. make a change in the women's division. And and so we love her. We love we her. Love Let's her. bring her in, guys. This is when we've been waiting for since episode one. We've been hearing you guys say that you want this guest, ladies and gentlemen. Here she is, our friend and a true grown ass woman. It's Gail Kim. She is. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you look beautiful. You guys Hi, look Gail. beautiful. I love that I can just be a bum and wear my hair in a ponytail. And well, we did you know. warn you. It's a virtual slumber party. I always say, like, if fans are not sure how the show is, I'm like, if you were to come to the hotel room and hang out with us after a show, this is exactly what we'd be doing. Just well, this is exactly what we'd be doing, right? <laughs> with, 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 yeah, that, that and zip cream. Don't forget our zip cream's all over our face. <laughs> what is it? Right? That and zit cream. Said, and our zit cream on our face, drinking alcohol and shooting. Oh, we don't show we don't show the public that though. No. <laughs> it's not that kind of have to uphold some sort of standard here. Yes. Slightly. <laughs> so well, I'm going to have all, ginger vodka. Yes. Ooh. Ginger vodka with diet ginger ale, like a low-cal Moscow mule. Oh, wow. so you're gonna make one on oh. camera? Yes. This is so with cool. My, wow. With my Robert Irvine Tumblr. Oh wow. my God. We can't wait to hear all about that because actually that's what we do every show. We, we ask you who you're wearing, what are you drinking? While Gail makes her drink, Mickey, we'll go with you. Who are you wearing and what are yes. you drinking tonight, girl? Um, I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> Let that shit go. Uh, oh, it's hey. nice. look, look at Mickey's, do you see her tights? Well, well, bangerang. Little satiny. Ooh. Yeah, satiny. Fancy. That's where I got this t-shirt from. Dollar Tree. No. We love Dollar Tree. That's a inside joke. Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. No, no. I know but Lisa loves Dollar Tree. She <laughs> loves it. A Dollar Tree. <laughs> she does. Every wait, wait, where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? I just wish. 
You know the app Wish? Wish app. Oh, I know. I love Wish app. It, he always kept popping it. up, popping up, popping up. And for whatever reason, this t-shirt, it looked, but it's not. It's like, if you saw it up close, it's just kind of like ironed on. Um, I don't know if it's going to last more take it than, off. It's fine. <laughs> take it off. Only Val will off. be dressed extra special for a PJ party. <laughs> yeah. Well, it you was only what? a dollar. It was only a dollar, and I think it was free to have it shipped to me in the little offer. It only took it's like. Well yeah. It took like, I don't know. I want to say I've it took about never bought anything from me. that. I have so you would recommend Wish? No, oh. I would not. I think. I think <laughs> I Lisa loves it though. But I you do love, love it. it, but if you, um, I do love it. You have to be really, you have to read the, the, the comments. I ordered it. It was, you know, and it's also Asian. It's Asian sizes. So they'll fit. <laughs> That's real. So it's like, they're, I'm they're not more, the typical, I don't feel like I'm the typical small You're, not, you're muscular. You're yeah. muscular. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Um, they're, they're super small. So if you wear a, a, a medium pants, you order yeah. a triple extra large. Yeah. Uh, I'm not even going to bother. I can't, I can't do that. Uh, no. <laughs> it's so cheap. You're like, oh, you told yeah, me about this. Super cheap. I like, think I spent a, probably like 50 bucks on wish that day. And I ordered like 15 things. Wow. No, some of them were free. Some of them, I just had to pay for the shipping. Some were like, and I was like, Oh, you know what? I was bored. Cause it's COVID. So I was bored. Just, yeah, I, I was over Amazon. So I moved on and I tried the wish thing thinking I could do some stuff, but I literally, I think I waited for some of the stuff. I thought it just was never going to show up because it was like, it was wishful thinking. Was. It was wishful right. thinking. It's going to be good. Yeah, the Val, I don't know. Your packaging. Val's like on random. it. Random. <laughs> Yeah, wishful thinking. It's wishful. <laughs> That's why I started giggling to my in my head because it's like, is it going to be crap or is it not? You're like, you you wish for it being good, but you did not. <laughs> Aptly named. Wait, oh so God. do you guys all drinking? just start oh. drinking when the show starts, or do you drink? Are you pre-drink? Did you pre-drink? Oh, and I have to. <laughs> seltzer thing. Oh, yeah. Also, everyone I said, I told that I was coming on God TV, I was like, oh my God, please say hi to everyone for me. Ross Foreman. Um, oh <laughs> <laughs> and for people who are watching, Ross Foreman is the PR guy at Impact Wrestling, um, who we've all worked with. Yeah. Long time yeah. Um, Chris from Showmasters DM me too, and he's like, please tell everyone I said hi. Yay! Yeah. Because I've all worked with them too, and of course the girls, you know. Like oh, I love like that. that. This was probably the most exciting for us. We when we when we have our girlfriends from wrestling on because you know we, we always go so far back. We've had Melina on as well. We've had a lot of oh, guys boy. on as well too. But it's it's special when it's when it's a girlfriend kind of moment. Um, Lisa, I have to ask, who are you wearing, and what are you drinking over there? You look cute. Uh, I am. I I am not in my 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 pajamas. What kind of sorta? Of, but um, I'm wearing um. It's it says the resident brewery which is right down the street from me it's a local brewery um they gave me a four pack to try um and, and there is uh it's associated with um the local it's a bar a neighborhood bar in the neighborhood down, downtown um really fun actually place i like it. it's very low key Ooh. just going to baseball cap and it's like an ale house to me which oh is my god house. oh boy ale house. <laughs> i know but, but ale. it's my first time trying this i grew beer. up in that ale house okay holy guacamole Yes. The story. We made a lot of mistakes in, 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 in the ale house. Fan Fridays, in my defense. <laughs> yeah. But oh, some boy. Of them are cute. <laughs> or, the, or the Double Tree Bar. Double <laughs> Red River. Bar. We won't talk Wait, about that. I don't that. think that was Red River. Good, I don't think Mickey was there either. I think Val, that's like way back, way back. Red River? What, Red River? No, yeah, uh, Double Tree Bar. Oh. No, yeah, I was around for that. Bar. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mr. Flair loved the Double Tree Bar. Sure did. He did. Yeah. Everyone yeah. loved the Double Tree Bar. Everybody he did. sure did. Well, I am drinking. Uh, <laughs> I remember we were thinking about what Gail would have. Gail, you were very much a red wine gal, if I remember, weren't you? You still have I wine? am, <laughs> but the thing is so during COVID, normally when Robert and I are on the road, we drink all the time because it's yeah. just a habit. He's very British and ha likes to have his beer at dinner, and then it makes me want to have a wine. But when we're home, normally that's our cleansing time. So during the whole COVID, I didn't drink hardly. I mean, I think I had one Zoom party with the girls or something like that. And then so we just went on the road a couple of weeks ago and I drank literally a wine for 10 to 12 days straight, one or two or three. And I was like, oh, I got to, I just got to 
Slow yeah. down a little bit. It's like a little, yeah, you go through these phases. I just remember you, you liked mm -hmm. red wine. So I thought, oh, I'll have a red wine in honor of Gail Gail. And my uh, my cup, which was sent to me by my girlfriend, Erin. She might be in the chat room right now if she is. Hi, Erin. Yeah. Because uh, I always love, um, uh, Lisa's has all these novelty glasses. And she was yeah. like, well, I don't want you to be jealous of Lisa. I wanted to give you your own. So this one says, looks like a beauty, drinks like a beast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And I wish I, I knew all these things about what we're wearing and tumblers and... I would have been more. I love that there. Robert has his own tumbler. Yeah, that's Fancy. so cool. And what so is your shirt? You know the ones that stay cold. The oh, whatever they're called. Oh, nice. Oh, the fancy ones. What's your shirt say? Snack. Oh, okay. so I'm like all Robert Irving tonight because I know I can bug it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a snack and chill. I just the the yeah, crunch. crunch. Yeah. The crunch. crunch new vegan bars. Oh, yeah. oh. we can't wait to try that. I love I know. it. Right. They're just coming out now, so you'll That's all get fun. a taste yes, for sure. Indeed. That's fantastic. Okay, so what are we discussing? What are you wearing, today? Val? Oh. oh, Val, sorry, Val, go, go, go. Uh, again, I was like, oh, Gail's coming out. I want to wear something especially cute. And then I ended up looking <laughs> the sluttiest I've looked this entire show. Like, I waited till episode 17 to, like, pull out the, like, like the all this going on. Good, but hey, good. why not? Well, I'm going to, like, a, a slutty McScrooge. Did I do it? <laughs> Man. <laughs> you are not slutty ever. No, ever. Like, there would you, you let me read you a bedtime story if I, you know, like with a hat? Like, yeah. Please, me too. Please. I can yeah. see you guys better now. <laughs> oh look, we're all putting on our glasses now. <laughs> Let's all put on our glasses. <laughs> I'm I feel telling this you guys, hard. it's really happening. My eyesight yeah. is going downhill fast. You what number are you wearing? Fun. What number are you wearing? Um, 1.25 or 5, 1.5. I'm at 200, you guys. <laughs> and I'm still like this up to the screen looking at you. Yeah. But that cracks me up. Can you stand up? I want to see your outfit, Val. Me? Mm -hmm. No, it's just, it's just, it's all revealing. It's like a little teeny bra top and like, no. I, I Everybody wants to see it now, much. now that you've oh, described it. <laughs> outfit you look gorgeous thanks i'll post a picture okay i'll post a picture it's from nasty gal uh gail you probably know what nasty Ooh. gal is nasty gal yeah yes. they're 50 percent off sale love it love it they're and always 50 percent off always. yeah they're so good mm -hmm. i got a whole slew of pajamas because that's what we kind of do i mean we don't have to always wear pajamas but we do have a some somewhat of a slumber party theme so that's fun for us mm -hmm. but gail what have you been up to since we last saw yes. you what's the last time let's oh, my see God. well we i think yeah. we've all kind of been going through COVID. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's been kind of I'm trying to see the bright side of it in terms uh -huh. of us all slowing down because the world is going so fast and um, you know maybe it's I don't know it's very intense at the same time but I'm glad for Robert and I we have really it really showed that we just really get along. And I yeah, think this is the time period too, where it's kind of a test for couples, maybe. Yeah. Like, are Lisa says that all the time. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was saying that uh, my friend Beth said, we need to have a t-shirt that says, I my relationship survived COVID. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She says, and I quote, she'll say, I have to be honest with you. <laughs> this is going to make or break relationships. And she's so right. And we all made it, right? Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. over yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then, like, I missed, I missed Impact tapings the very first time because COVID had just happened. So I was like, oh, I'm freaked out. Not going to work. Second time, it started getting worse. But with us, we don't go, like, Mickey, WWE is going every week, right? And so yeah. it's AEW. So we only tape every month and a bit. So it's actually safer for us, which is great. Cool. Uh, and we just tape four to six weeks of TV. And so the second time I went, and then the third time, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. <laughs> we got COVID. Uh, <laughs> so we did get COVID. Oh, no. And yeah, and actually, I'm glad we got through it quickly, two weeks right. for both of us. Wow. And feel like we have anti uh, and antibodies, which is great, uh, but of course, still being careful. Um, but it was more annoying than anything. So I'm just thankful that we didn't go through, I hear horror stories of people right. of what they experienced. So, so you and Robert both got it? Yeah. So uh. I feel like he got it and then I 
caught it from him. It's couples so. care, and hu husbands oh. are very generous in that way. It's like when my husband yeah. got the coronavirus, <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> caring is well, caring. It is. It's love. Yeah, thanks, fun. Did you get, did you I'd rather have it at deal? the same time, though. What? Right. Wait, did you feel horrible? Like, did you, like, It was fever? more like, annoying. Like, there, so or? this is what happened. Basically, okay. he was not feeling well. And then I said, you have COVID, you have COVID. I just know it, I just know it. And so we kind of like socially distanced in the house because I wasn't feeling symptoms. And there was uh -huh. one moment where I was already walking towards the couch and he got up off the couch and he, when he stood and passed by me, he literally just sighed really loud. And he went <sighs> like that. And I felt his breath on my face and I go, oh my God, you just breathed on me. You just breathed on me. I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. So the next day I was like, let me know if you're not feeling well, I can bring you to the doctor and whatever. So the next morning he's like, okay, bring me to the doctor. And they, so I dropped him off because I'm not allowed in and they just turned around and he called me. He's like, yep, it's positive. And I was like, and that night I just started getting symptoms, but we got completely wow. different symptoms, which is really funny. That's what um, I'm curious. Everybody, everyone I've talked to that has had it or had like whatever, Everyone yeah. experienced different kind of symptoms or like the yeah. things that affected them. And some are totally fine. And then other people are like in mm -hmm. the hospital or like dying. It's just crazy how it attacks. Yeah. Yeah. We're just you had like a cough that. or like the, con or just. He had a cough, a little bit of a cough. I had more, I felt like I had arthritis from my hips down, like my uh, hips, uh -huh. my knees, my ankles is just very annoying. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. get that every morning on and off. And it's so weird because you feel those symptoms and then you have two hours of energy where I'd go do laundry, wash dishes and feel normal. And then I just crash again. And I had, um, so I had that, I'd have a fever every night, like where I soaked the bed, literally like wow. just fever for a week at night only. And then the last week was just fatigue. Just like you feel so tired. Yeah. And so I just rested. I just rested till I felt normal. And like, as soon as I had symptoms, I like, got a Z pack, doubled up my vitamins. Like I uh -huh. really tried to attack it, you know? Right. So. Mm -hmm. Right. You kicked its ass. I yeah. did. <laughs> I did. I don't know any other reason to do a shot. You guys are way too young to do the, to go through this, but I'm going through menopause. So, um, Oh no, that's, that's my fear. Yeah. I sweat at night and I get all like fatigue and then I have energy and I'm like, the mood swings and just, you know, you know, uh, my poor boyfriend, thank God he's surviving COVID and a girl that's going through menopause. So it's <laughs> that's it. yeah, yeah. That's his heart. Yeah, double, double. We need to talk on the side because it's been like, cause I'm 43 now and I don't, I think my mom got it earlier. I don't know. Do people want to hear about menopause? <laughs> sure. It's grown sure. ass women stuff. Yeah, We're no, talking about true. It is. Yeah. yeah. So I'm yeah. just always like, I, I'm just a little fearful i don't know why yeah oh i'm terrified I think, yeah i remember yeah. my mom going through it i would remember yeah. my mom going through it but i think it was it like right in her latter 40s early 50s that she started but it was not just like a year i don't no. think it was like a whole span of a couple of years that i think that she was like really in it oh yeah. boy and then and when i'm my mom used to complain yeah yeah your whole different. hormones yeah, your whole body is messed up um i was Think my mom was exaggerating and i'm like okay get over it. okay you're sweating i get it i get it we sweat all the time <laughs> and then till i'm going through it and then i reached out to uh it's called executive medical um and i got bio tea they're little tiny um tic tac size um pellets they insert on the top like like just on oh, the top of your mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and it, it's all natural and it slowly releases the hormones that you're lacking they take your blood and then it slowly releases it in the last um three to four months but since yeah. we're athletes, like a little bit higher metabolism, three months. So okay. I, I do notice, um, it, like it's, it, it helps your libido, the sweating, the moods and stuff like okay. that. And oh, the week, not when it starts going away, yeah. I need to make an appointment and wow. to get more bio I mean, I just, Okay, I guess I gotta do that. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> just research sort of it, stuff Gail, that research don't it. talk about. And it's like, but for example, I don't know much about it because growing up, a lot of people weren't talking about it. A lot of people yeah. talking about things like endometriosis and menopause and just female things where I'm like, because then you think the reason 
you freak out. The reason I freaked out about certain things is like, because no one was talking about them. So you think, oh, well, something's really wrong. It's just, mm-hmm. I mean, and then you read all these articles. I feel like of women people don't really about talk it. about it now though. Do you yeah. feel like people talk about it a lot now? Uh, I don't. Certain things I think are getting better. I would say like a lot of like female reproductive issues and like female, you know, that sort of area of, of the anatomy. Sure. They're talking about okay. it a little bit more, but there's still a stigma to it for sure. I don't know. Like when, when I go to the grocery store or something like that, you know, I'm sweating and I'll pass by a lady. I go, oh my God, damn menopause. She goes, oh, hon, it's an instant bond. It's an instant bond. Like when you Only Lisa will find the conversation with the person in the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, God oh, damn hormones. And she goes, yeah. oh, have you had, have you had this happen yet? And I'm like, yes, this is brutal. I was just, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Us women have it so tough, man. You do. You do. And I don't think these wrestling fans, the ones that are watching right now, the wrestling fans, you guys have no idea how much more money the women spend yeah. on their gear and everything and their makeup and their clothes. And we don't make equal to what the guys make in our position. So Botox, Botox, everything. Wrestling, um, yeah, everything, <laughs> everything. younger, hair extensions, like everything adds crystals. up. Those Swarovski crystals get me. Oh, yeah, yeah. They get a lot of people. They do. We've had these conversations so many times where it's like they go. I always ask people, "What is the most unglamorous thing about wrestling?" And there are so many unglamorous parts where they go, "Oh, well, you just get all your your high heels and your dresses and your gear and whatever paid for." And uh, no, dude, like no. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. yeah. Well, you get all your hotels and you're bussed around, aren't you? Like a big, like you have your own buses, t- busting you guys around. No, we got rental cars and we drive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we book mm-hmm. our hotel rooms. It's and- very much like a circus. Yeah. 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 It's so true. Yeah. Well, Gail, Gail, what's going on as far as uh, current projects? I see you tweeting a lot about Impact Wrestling, who there's still, I've, I've seen very focused on the female, the knockouts division, yeah. which is great. So, how, how are yeah. things there, first of all? Really good. I mean, uh, you know, Obviously, you guys have all worked there and it's gone through so many different regimes, as we'll call them, and ownership or management. And right now, we just have a really good team. And Scott Demore is running it, pretty much heading it up with uh, Don Callis as well. Yeah, and it's just a really, um, it's a great environment. Everyone's so happy and just really working hard. And I always joke kind of like that we're the develop. we're really the developmental for WWE. Yeah, I feel like I see that. Yeah, like, yeah. We built. We're really great at building talent. I will say, definitely polishing and developing characters and talent, and then obviously a lot of them who haven't experienced WWE or AEW or that kind of level um, do go on, and that's okay, you know. And then we just yeah. build more talent. The one thing about this company that I will say is they utilize everyone. If you're right. on their roster, you're going to get used in some way. And again, like you said, Val, the women's division is just, I'm so proud of them and I'm so invested and it's- Well, it, it says a lot for you, you, Gail, you're the agent. You're in charge yeah. of the women's division. So, the, so now up. it's kind of changed a little bit. I still uh, agent some of the girls' matches, but now Madison has started agenting a little bit. They're trying to get her in there doing a little bit more and they bumped me up. I'm now co-talent relations with D'Lo. And so, nice. D-Lo, D-Love. Yeah, wow. D-Lo, D-Love, D-Lo. I love D-Lo. That's an amazing I mean, move for you, though. Go ahead, babe. Congratulations. It, thank you. I, That's a and good thing. Yes. 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 Let's celebrate it's you. Let's do a shot. Let's do a shot. Like, is it time for a shot? Let's do a shot. I was looking at you, Val. You're like, God damn it, we missed our shot opportunity. I tried to, if, if you guys will rewind this, I tried to do it a while ago. I was like, shot? Okay, well. Oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know, I'm so, I saw you, actually. I go, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Shot? Let's do a shot. Yes. Oh, are we doing a shot? Yes. Let, Let me, me get a, take a shot. swig. Let's to do a shot. It's a swig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do a swig of the regular vodka. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. When I got promoted last month, I got a couple of people just joking around saying, Congratulations, I think, because talent <laughs> relations was always seen as that oh, asshole position, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you got to remember, there's never been a woman in that position. And I think <sighs> women handle things. A little bit differently yeah like we can be a little bit more empathetic at times i think and so far it's been it's had i've had such great feedback and i think um as a woman being in this position it's i think it's actually a positive i think that people feel more um 
they feel like I'm more approachable to talk to maybe. I, I'm not sure. I'm only a month in, but everything's been going really great. And D'Lo, I couldn't have asked for anyone better. From the day best. one, he's like, we love I want everyone to see you as my equal because he's the head of talent relations. Yeah. And he's like, and I, you know, we just take turns with everything. Everything's very 50-50. He's just an amazing guy. That's amazing so cool gift to hear. Yeah. Because you're, you're such a badass, Gail, but there's still obviously um, sensitivity there that I think maybe talent relations has been lacking in, in so many companies. And girl, yeah. you, you can relation my talent anytime. <laughs> yeah, let's drink to that. <laughs> I'm gonna look like Gotta I'm make it creepy. Right I'm gonna, gonna make it. Are you, I'm gonna are hate you swigging this. too? Yeah. You swigging? So I think I'm gonna swig it out of the bottle because I brought this little plastic cup in, but I thought it wasn't. <laughs> Robert's like, oh, are you gonna go get drunk now? <laughs> yes. So, like, has, well, uh, so we have seen the show. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. He can do a <laughs> show with us. He's not excluded. Hi, Robert. Robert come and do a shot with us, Robert. He won't do a shot. Shot, but shot, 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 shot. Shot, Yeah. This is so, my friend. Um, look, this is this redneck Riviera. Yeah, I was wondering who that picture was. Oh, my was. gosh. Was That's from Tennessee, right? Yeah. Who makes that? I know so. Um, you remember that uh, band called Big and Rich? Save a horse, yeah. ride a cowboy. Yeah. John Rich. It's, he's, got okay, a red, he's got a restaurant down there, but this is his whiskey. So okay. I got to open for him, but then he'd give me one of his bottles of whiskey because I also got to do something down there. Was it for, I had a show, like a, a CD party or something there on his rooftop bar. Yeah. yeah. So he gave That's me a bottle. Nice. I love is this your first time so, drinking it? You just opened um, it? No, I've drank it before, but I was like, this one was sitting unopened. I've had it. And a lot of it goes to his fold, the Folds of Honor, right? Like, so he's such a great dude, this guy, John Rich. They were in TNA a few so times, nice. aren't they? Because Dixie yes. knew that or something. Yeah. 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 And Robert Chef is always wearing that particular cap, baseball cap, the red Oh, really? Era. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they went there or something. Yeah. 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 He's a good dude. And when yeah. I see that whiskey, Mickey, you know what I think? Red, I'm a redneck woman. Oh my god! Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Gretchen Wilson. Oh, That's how it. do I, I know that? Twitter. Yeah. You know. My, I'm not very. What, what are you, you drinking, Lisa? I just poured. I thought Rich, I thought Robert was going to join us for another shot, so I poured beer in my shot glass. <laughs> <laughs> the beer shot. Be ready. The old beer yeah, shot. Because I, I don't have any alcohol on the side, so yeah. I could tell him to say hi if he peeks his head out, but he's literally yeah. on the couch. So when he's on the couch, it's like um, he's done. He can, it's just he done. Can, he's done. Time. He can yeah. fall asleep. I love that. He always yeah, falls asleep. Well, I speaking did. of Robert, you mentioned he's got some new products out, and that he has a new vodka. Is that right? I, I didn't know he was in like the alcohol. Okay. business. that's so cool. So he's been in the alcohol business for a couple of years. He partnered uh -huh. with. So this company is called Boardroom Spirits, uh -huh. and. Basically, they came and I taste. He actually left it up to me, which was crazy. He's like, "Do you like this vodka?" So I'm a vodka drinker, and I said, "Actually, I love it." And they have like citrus. Oh, I love a flavored vodka. Oh, oh, this is the one that you drink with the Oh, it's a whole different flavor. Oh, wow! Yeah, they have a gin that they they call it the non-drinkers gin because everyone loves it. And I'm I'm not just saying this because he's partners in this. Literally, it was branded as a better for you type thing because it's clean right. and they only use they don't use uh, preservatives and they just use uh, natural sugars like for example yeah they use the real fruit mm -hmm. and literally i'm not joking when i drink say three quarters of the bottle one night or something if i'm partying right. i do not get a hangover i never really? feel gross the next day Headache. yeah so that's we'll just all... that's why i always drink like top shelf alcohol we've talked about that before like i don't do can't do that rail stuff. I can't. I will exactly. sell all day. That's the worst. I'm, I might Me already too. have a hangover the next day, but I don't want to help it by absolutely yeah. drinking no. crap. Like no. I can't. Look what I'm drinking. Oh my I'm god! On, don't I'm, I'm on the budget COVID. Uh, I'm on a budget from this COVID. Get no, they know the pause. is the it's worst. Awful. I love that, Gail. If it's you guys awful. come to my house, I'll get you all stocked up. Yay! Uh -huh. So he has, I didn't realize it was, I thought it was just a, a regular vodka. I didn't realize there was flavors as well. That's awesome. There's flavors, yeah. there's gin. They have actually more coming out, but they, um, they're going to change the name from boardroom to Irvine's just to uh -huh. get, because he's just like 
with Fit Crunch and everything, everything's right. going to be under his name. It's kind of seen more that way. Um, right. So they're switching over the name and the label right now. That's why I haven't really advertised so much or pushed for it because it's actually right. the one product that I love so much. I mean, yeah. besides the bars, but I mean, it's amazing products. So I can't wait to try it. But I, I just yeah. started to laugh to myself because when you talked about putting his name on stuff. Now, when someone says like, you know, my husband's a, a, a food network chef and like, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, well, world renowned, of course I believe you, but you know how sometimes you, somebody goes, oh, I'm a singer. And you're like, okay. And then you see them on like a subway ad and you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize. <laughs> two, two times <laughs> this happened. You'll have to tell him. So I'm obsessed with Epcot's food and wine festival. Like that's, yes. that's, with all due respect to baby Jesus, that's my holiday. That's what I look forward to every year. And on the board, like you can't, that's not, other than him being on RuPaul's Drag Race, like you can't get cooler than this in my book. So I'm at food and wine, you know, maybe seven wines in, what else? No judgment. And I'm looking at the, at the board and it's like Robert Irvine's picks from a lot. I was like, holy guacamole, this is no joke. And then I'm with Mike Meber, as we call him, Mike Weber, you know, yeah. you love Mike Weber? Yeah. He yes. is my TV. He was uh, at a hotel uh, somewhere in Vegas. We were doing some kind of um, arm wrestling or boxing match for Fight TV. And we're walking past, and I think it was the Tropicana. Your husband was on the side of the building. Not like a little poster. The length of the building. I was like, oh. They oh, changed crap. that because they kind of fell apart. So they put just the strip. But and it was so it, funny. It was, like, he's, he's good going to for himself. <laughs> Listen, you know what? I will say this about Robert, okay? When I met him, he didn't have all this. He had one little show, not even Restaurant Impossible. He had Dinner Impossible. Then he went on to have Restaurant Impossible. This guy, he's got a great business mind, number one. He's a risk taker. He is always, like, everything. So when you see a business of his, it's not like someone paid him to use his name. Robert's like, no. I want to be partners or own 51% or whatever it is. And cause he knows he cares about everything or believes in every product he does or every show he does. He puts his own money in and takes that risk and builds that. And that's something that I've always admired about him. It's like this, he's such a go-getter and he works his ass off. And Ambition. Yeah, I feel different. so lazy next to him. You know, it's like, Oh, oh my, my God. God. This guy is just like, Amazing. It's funny. It's 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 funny. Uh, I just lost my train of thought when you were talking about that. He's such a go-getter. ODB reached out to him, yeah. and he's yes. helping okay. her out. And yeah, because um, mm -hmm. yeah, she's she she's does. a hard worker too, man. Yeah. She puts her heart, her blood, sweat, and tears in everything she does. I hear it every day on Boxer. And um, yeah, as she I, really you know, does. We, all three of us were saying you need to reach out to Robert. You mm -hmm. got to reach out. He's, you know, but we don't want to abuse that friendship. Going, oh, oh my I don't gosh. Want to I've been telling her for years, I go, talk to Robert, just take out an hour of your day because, I mean, ODB has the heart, she has the product because I've tasted her meat. Freaking oh amazing. God, so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes, just like on his Restaurant Impossible show, the number one problem for most people is they don't have a business mind or they don't know what they're, a lot of people open up restaurants thinking, I love to cook. My family thinks that I, I'm right. a great cook. They yeah, don't right. realize that it's business. It's a business so that, that takes up your life. And right. so he just talked to her and she, they got a little lesson and hopefully yeah. everything's, you know, much better. That's so yeah. Cool. Yeah. we had the conversation yeah. with her about that, about how sometimes I wouldn't say it's even asking for help, but it's, it's saying, Hey, I admire what you do. I respect what you do. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, I, I would like to follow in your footsteps or, you know, maybe, exactly. maybe get some of your insight, you know, right. I yeah, think right. that that's the one thing a lot of people are afraid to ask for is help. Mm -hmm. And I mean, why not, man, if you have the resources to ask for help and get better and make yourself more of a success, I ask Robert for help all the time. I'm like, or advice, I should say, like, yeah. how would you handle this? And just like he would ask me to, you know, cause I, women have women's intuition. So there's many times in his um, work business feelings where I'm like, I don't know about that person. They seem a little shady. And mm. you know what? I've been right about every single person. And yeah. the best I think just women a woman's have discernment gut. a little yeah. more so than men. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to people, like discernment, yes. like I'm, I'm getting a weird feeling from this person or mm -hmm. it can be discerning of like, this person is so quick to want to be my friend, but why, or why are they so quick to, you know, yeah. it's just, yeah, I think, but I think it's also nice when, like you just said, Gail, when the person that you're with, you respect them enough to 
want to have their input. Like, because we're all grown ass women, we have certain things that will happen where say a project falls in your lap or for me, maybe it's a contract to do a show or to do um, a presenter gig or whatever. Do mm -hmm. I really need someone to look at the contract? Do I need their help? I, I'd probably be fine on my own, but I respect the person I'm with. And I would like my husband to say like, like, Hey, just for peace of mind, can you, I want a second pair of eyes. Can you help me? Let's discuss it. I want to talk it through because yeah. I respect yeah. and value his opinion. You know what I mean? I yeah, think that's important. definitely. I always yeah. tell this story about um, how I knew Robert was the one is <gasps> Okay, so all female wrestlers, I always give this example because Christy and I used to talk about it all the time when we were on a plane and that guy would be like, can I help you with your bag? And we're like, we're fine. Because we're so like independent and strong. We're like, we got it. We don't need no help. And so <laughs> we're all so independent and strong. And before him, I always wanted to be the man in the relationship. Always, always, always. And then when the day I met him, I saw how in charge he was. And I remember thinking, wow that's a real man like he's strong i like that that's so like alpha but not like in a bad way yeah right and then when we got to know each other it was just like he respected that i had my own career and loved my independence and he supported that so i had this strong man that supported my independence and strength and i just i just knew you know at I that time that. Like, instead like of being that. jealous and envious of your fame and I'm yeah. like, oh, like, oh, Gail's so hot, and you're looked at as a sex, sexy woman. Instead of being envious of that, being very proud of you and saying, "That's my wife." Yeah. You know, oh my God, yeah. she's beautiful and strong, and um, you know. That too, lucky. but I mean, we're also a very normal couple too. Though. Of course, when you at the beginning, you both have insecurities because you don't know. Oh, yeah. oh sure. You don't know each other that well, and you guys all have to admit. Um, it would be hard for any man who's not in the wrestling business to date someone who is in the business. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. It's a very insecure thing because well, guys, so all they see is these fit guys, muscular guys in yes. their little trunks. And we're like, we don't even notice their physiques because we see them every day. You know, yeah. it's just, it's just funny I'm how- I'm not even into muscles. I've always said that, be like, well, why not? We're like, I've dated some muscly guys. I'm like, but I've never been attracted to muscles ever. Like. But it's, it's, just, it's just welcomely available to you, I suppose, if you're in the rest of business. But it's, <laughs> but it, it is interesting that like, we we try to be independent. Well, we are independent women, but then it does take a guy who has. I always say they have their, you know what together. They have the, they have their stuff together. Yeah. Like, vision. Yeah, yeah. Like with my husband, I always say um, there were a couple things that I noticed first where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm into this guy. The way he treated people, from like the, mm -hmm. the pedicab driver to the to the doorman to the waiter to me, treated everybody the same and everybody nicely. And then there were certain parts of it, like you said, Gail, I was like, I'm not sure if I, you know, I'm kind of have my little wall up. We had this conversation on Voxer, it's your favorite thing, Gail, Voxer, the other day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was something really stupid. We were talking about when a guy orders for you. And I was like, I was dating this guy and he would always order like, like seaweed salad for me. Never asked me if I like seaweed yeah. salad. I don't want seaweed salad, but he always <laughs> ordered for me. And I just thought, that is so weird. I don't like when he does that. Alan, he's also in the business, so he knows like food and wine, but he would kind of like nicely, gently order for me and sort of take charge a little bit. And I was like, that is fantastic. <laughs> and I like it. I like when a guy orders for me. But I found I it like very like say. misogynistic before because the guy was a I, 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 think, I, th now I find I it very ma manly. And um, I mean, of course they know what I don't like or like this. Hey, how do you, how do you feel about scallops? Or how do you feel about that? Yeah. But they ask me, you know, I'm like, you know, what are you looking at? I'm I kind of eyeballing the sirloin. Okay. Huh. She'll have the sirloin, and I find that very it's nice. Yeah, I like it. Mickey's I like, like, no, Mickey's like no. no. She has a good idea. Let's hear Mickey's point no. of view on this one. I think. Well, here's the thing. Here's the difference. If you know, like I remember when the first time I ever had Indian food, I did let Nick order for me Indian food because I didn't know sure. what to order. I was like, just please don't do super spicy. Other than that, I'm pretty open. Like, don't give yeah. me no like weird things, and don't overbear me with spice. I can't do it. Yeah. Or if it's like, say it's a specialty restaurant where they know that menu and they're like, oh, you have to try this. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? That's yeah. one thing, but I can, no. Isn't that I funny? Order, I want <laughs> to. Next time we go out to eat, I'll be like, she'll have this. And you'll start talking about it. Ba, 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 ba. No, no. She's having this. <laughs> <laughs> Give her you know, the boomerang you know, shrimp. <laughs> the boomerang <laughs> shrimp. That was so random. You know, um, has to, be, to be like weird I'm like like david doesn't order for me because i'm yeah. more an adventurer adventurous yes. eater yeah, i right. like unusual food and i said like hey, have you ever tried this he goes 
I'm not sure, huh? Cartilage. Like what? cartilage. She likes cartilage. I like cartilage. I do. I like it. Yeah, you like yeah. the chew on that cartilage. I, I, chew. I have unusual, yeah. I, yeah. What? On I, what? On the chicken bone. The ends. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm half Puerto Rican. We eat the chicken. We, we don't, my grandparents ate the chicken Travel, marrow. Scratch is Puerto Rico off the travel list. That's a thing there to eat cartilage? <laughs> well, one time, well, I have to say, we've okay, discussed okay, this before. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm not embarrassed. Just, you tell what you say. Go ahead, Gail. I'm I, not embarrassed. I said to Lisa, oh, I love to chew the cartilage off of like short rib Korean style cow, cow, cow bean. And she's like, me too. And so we were out for dinner one time and we ordered something. I can't remember what it is. And she goes, here, have some of the cartilage. And it was a totally different type of cartilage. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I can't eat that cartilage. That it's word, like weird. I, I've never heard to describe things that you would find edible. I'm real <laughs> squeamish with stuff. I've gotten better being around Europe. You know, Gail, you have a British husband. There's a thing, they eat lamb, they eat pigeon and all this wacky. I love lamb. <laughs> Rabbit, goat. For those who love the lamb. No. Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> but like we'll watch travel shows and like the day they were they were eating barnacles ew barnacles those are the little well, things that the latch boats? onto whales yeah. the boats yes that's a scavenger it's like a snail they take their little thing off and it's like a little worm I oh no <laughs> ew. Yeah. i can't do that adventurous no no the cartilage is pretty bad you guys yeah Wait, Robert's eating muskrat. Have you, because I know you're from Virginia, and I know that's an area. Have you ever eaten muskrat? I've not eaten the muskrat, no. Okay, Robert ate it while he was in that kind of general area. In that area? Yeah, it's very popular. It's like a, I think it was Virginia, somewhere around Virginia. I can't remember. He did an RI. West Virginia. I will okay. say I am okay. adventurous and to the point where if someone was to offer me and to have it cooked in a special way and that was the thing yeah. of that area, I might try it. Would I love it? I don't know, but I would at least try it. But then there's obviously certain things you just can't try. What's yeah. the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? We'll start with Mickey and now I want you to prove it. How adventurous are you? I don't know. I, I mean... I don't know. I mean, I obviously, I've eaten sushi. I don't haven't eaten anything too crazy. <laughs> sushi? Get out of town. That's too crazy. No. I can't Get think off my of scoop. oysters. I just, I don't really think. You're a wild woman. <laughs> You're a damn wild woman. The, the only thing I don't like, I don't, I'm not a bit in sushi. Oh, hey, Pixie. What's going hey, on? Hey. You're, talk, you're talking Wait, food? Lisa, Here. I know what you've eaten probably at my wedding because I ate it at the same time. I ate live octopus. Oh, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't remember it moving around in my mouth. I just thought it was really you can see yummy. It a little bit, just like mm -hmm. just do this, right? But I don't like out of sushi. I don't like uni. I don't like the texture of uni. That's a card game. Uno, uno. Wow. <laughs> you ain't a card it's, game. You're crazy. It's <laughs> uni like that weird orange, orange. Yes. Um, Not the eggs. Sea urchin. Sea urchin in the purple urchin, little. Yeah. That, that, you know, oh, yeah. I don't like the texture. It's very, I can't I describe know. it. I just can't do it. Yeah. I don't like raw octopus. I don't think I would I like raw octopus. octopus. I love octopus grilled, like Greek style, grilled, yeah. okay. calamari, okay. love calamari. I don't think I would like it raw. It's too like rubbery. It's the sucky suckies, the little. But, I can't. It's, always, it's always chewy though, don't you think? Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't been that adventurous. I've had um, goat stew, and I didn't realize it was goat stew. It was kind of good. Yeah. It. Um, was it good? It was good. I, yeah. It was like, an, it's like a curry goat stew, which I don't. Ha I don't have any passion for curry at all. I've never cared for it. But I love curries. Goat. I love goat and lamb. I hate to oh. admit it, but so you like gamey meats? Me? No. Yeah. No. 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 Deer. No. That's. I don't eat lamb. I don't eat venison. I've never had. No. I try. Lamb is a huge thing over here, as you know, Gail, and I cannot yeah. get past it. I don't care what you season Mickey, it with. Mickey eats that though. You like that? You like gaming yeah, meat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're so cute. Yeah. They are cute. They like, are. The animals, there's a lot in England. Are Turkeys are not. Cute. But yeah. see, they don't have as many cows in England. That's just it. Like where we farm a lot of beef here, we farm yeah. way much, way more beef than yeah. they do in England. Why so don't they just we have a big cow? steak and pork. 
We farm so much pork here. I mean, we farm a lot. I don't of shit. see pork ever here. Weirdly enough, but, you just said that but, barely ever. But you know what? Like, does it like Mickey? You're like near a, a chicken farm, didn't you? Grow up like near a it's chicken farm. You can't eat chicken very much. Oh, I gotta get more drink. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh! I remember the oh, Tyson oh. chicken plant, and it was on the drive. Oh. It stunk so bad. It's oh God! I couldn't it eat it. It stunk you know what? So you know what else I don't like? Oh, yeah, I don't I don't know like we can't talk about it. It's gross. Nobody yeah. will have an appetite for days. Well, okay. usually in this show, by the way, Gail, we talk about food and we're like, everyone in the chat says, oh my God, I'm so hungry. We're talking about nachos. <laughs> this is going to be one of those shows where it'll make people not want to eat. So yeah, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Robert is a chef. We're sitting there going, ooh, we're talking well, about this. And you know what's so funny? Because normally we eat dinner early. And so I go, hey, babe, I got this interview. I'm like, so, because normally I cook. So I'm uh -huh. like, either you can cook dinner, and he's like, oh, no, I'll just wait for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I so I'm like, all right. <laughs> I, I don't like oh, liver. Oh, that's so funny. I don't you like cook. liver. I know. She cooks, right? Does he love your cooking? I love cooking, and he never cooks. Uh-huh. That's when interesting. Job, he said, so it's good. Yeah. He likes it. He does like it, but it took uh -huh. me eight years eight years to feel brave enough to cook for him. And I used to cook for everyone before that. It's like, and then everything I was really good at when we started dating, I'm like, oh my God, am I doing it right? I can't, I just can't, I just can't. Aww. And then finally after eight years, I said, oh, screw it. I'm just gonna go for it. And now right. I cook all the time. You must be good if he likes your cooking. Yeah. He says I am. So, yeah, I mean, I keep it, it really it. healthy and simple and flavorful, you know? Yeah, right. You could do so, something for the book, Gail. You, we were you were talking about recipes on Twitter the other day, and you were talking about, I don't know, some kind of recipe you were making. But you know your stuff. You should make a, consider making, like, a book or something. I would yeah. read it. And then I'd make You know what it is? I feel like right it's almost a like someone it's coming in to write a wrestler book mm. when they're not a wrestler. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of people do cooking books. I think Renee's doing one now, you know? Like, yeah. every. A lot of people do cooking books, but I guess because I live with a chef, I feel like I'm not good enough to make cookbooks. Oh, right. Intimidating. Just give him the right it respect. Is. He's got all the cookbooks and stuff. So we talk a lot on the show about how we've been on the road for ages, eons, if you will. Yeah. Um, how has lockdown impacted you, like mentally, emotionally? Have you found it a bit depressing? Have you been kind of more productive and more creative, or a bit of both? I think a little bit of both. So at the beginning, I was like, oh, I'm going to learn something new every day, <laughs> right? We all. And then, yeah, we all did that, right? And yeah. then I kind of slowed down. And then after a while, I was like, I've never felt like, I felt like, I, I knew it wasn't real clinical depression, but I was just like, I've never felt like this down before. What's going on with me? Yeah. And yeah. So luckily I had all my girlfriends to turn to, I mean, Robert too, of course, but it's like, Thank God for, to be honest, all the wrestling girls, because even though, of course, we have friends outside the business, we don't really, the connection we all have is kind of different to me. Yeah. Anyways, literally, I could not see, you know, for example, Pete Slater just came to Impact, right? And I haven't seen him since I left WWE, which was I over 10 years so ago. Much. Isn't He's he kids, the, right? amazing? He yes. does have kids. <laughs> He's got kids. He does have kids. <laughs> I could have sworn he had kids. I don't know. And like, I haven't talked to him or seen him since I left, which was over, I think, 10 years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was, it was just like nothing, you know, just right. like, hey, buddy, how are you? It's you know, like and catching like, up. It's like catching up with a high school friend or like a, a kid yeah. you grew up with. Never and you talk on the phone. It's, you're, you go back Absolutely. to that moment, right? And right. I think yes. that's like, like with us wrestling, like especially as girls, like being in the locker room locked up, cooped up together so much, you have mm -hmm. to turn to each other. Like as, yeah. as hey, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, you, you can tell when someone's going through stuff and you're like, you need to yeah. talk to someone. And yeah. we had each other to talk to. And, you know, we're again with each other more so than our own family. So yeah. it was, we were lucky to find that group of people like mm -hmm. us four together and like ODB and Christy Hemi, and like just all of us, like still, we can still go and talk to and say, they still have our back. And, still and I actually, candy. and I feel like the bond is even stronger when we're past our generation. Cause now we don't have to, 
not that we really fought for a spot, maybe in WWE more so. No, 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 but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like competition or anything. It's just that bond right. is left, you, right? You have a different mentality because you've been yeah. there and you've been in that spot and you've been there, done that. So you understand exactly. a lot of the yeah. decisions or like where people are at at different levels as well. But it's also amazing when you think about like what small circle, what a small circle and what a small world it really, really is. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. when I left WWE the first time and then came back to Impact and I remember like Chris Daniels and Frankie mm -hmm. and like everybody, it was like this, it was like the same people, some of the same people that I either worked with at Ring of Honor, worked with them at TNA the first time mm -hmm. or just we had crossed paths at some point and yeah. always. It's crazy. Or yeah. you've heard of them, and now in this day and age, it's like I feel like I know through people and know people through social media, and I've never right. met them. It's There's like been oh, so many yeah, people like that, yeah, yeah. That, I, that I've that I feel like I know because I've seen them, you know, in wrestling, and they also know my friends. We just had the conversation yeah. today again on Boxer, where I've been in airports <laughs> before, and before Elijah, the Pope Elijah, Elijah Burke came into yeah. Impact Wrestling, I was sitting on the floor. My flight was delayed. It's by a trash can. And I, I see this shadow approaching me and I look up and I'm this huge guy and he goes, he goes, hey, is your name Val? And I go, yeah, is your name Elijah? And he's like, yeah. And it was cool because he was in WWE, I was in Impact Wrestling and we kind of like started talking. And then I had another funny story about uh, Seth Rollins was standing in line somewhere and I was getting off a plane with all the Impact Wrestling crew, Nick Aldis and, uh, you know him, Mickey? Right here. <laughs> Ring a bell. Uh, and uh, and Devon Dudley and we're all walking and, and they, they I don't know if they recognized or not they walked past and I see his crazy two-toned hair at the time and I was like that's Seth Rollins so I just walked past and I was like no no I gotta do what Elijah did for me to kind of say like hey you're in wrestling too how are you buddy so I went up and said, like, <laughs> he's like who the hell is this girl that's weird and I said is your name Seth and he was like yeah and we talked for a couple minutes just like, want to say hi introduce myself blah 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 but I didn't know them, but it happens that you feel like you do because you're all in the same business and it's just a nice little unspoken family, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, totally. And also the Good Brothers just came over too. And so I when I met Carl for the first time, he's like, hi, I'm Chad and I, or Carl, yeah. whatever, Chad, I can't remember. And I said, oh, I, I know. And he goes, oh, well, we've never met before. I'm like, oh, we haven't? <laughs> I just like, like literally have. thought that we've met before. Yes. Social media, wrestling, whatever. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's so yeah. funny. It's funny. Yeah. It is funny. I mean, we just got that but connection. You feel like you know bar. everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. you feel like you know everybody. You're just like going, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we've met. We had to have met. We met maybe yeah. at a Comic Con or at a sign or a WrestleCon. No? And I go, I am so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> The good part about yeah, yeah. everyone switching companies back and forth is that it does kind of come full circle. Like if you don't meet them, then they're going to meet them somewhere down the line or whatever. Yeah. Spoken bond. That's why they. That's why they always say, "Be careful." What is it like? Be careful who you step on on the mm -hmm. way up because you're going to see those same. See people them on your way, way down. down. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and people's reputations so always precede them for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh my gosh. Oh my god! Look at that people belly. Hey, buddy. Hi, Wait. Hi. Look at that face. Look at that face. Look at <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pendulum. <laughs> a pendulum. Pixie pendulum. The pendulum. That's a big word. I haven't had enough okay. wine yet. Okay. Hey, can you guys? Can I get comfortable right now? Sure. Take I, my, I'm sweating in my hat. <sighs> I was about to wrap up because it's we have enough footage. I just wanted. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I had to take my phony pony out. I knew out. you were going to do something. <laughs> I knew you were going to do something. Gail, we're not allowed to show bloopers on here, but the bloopers that she's shown where she gets real comfortable, we're like, oh, Jesus. No. <laughs> I thought I you were literally going to flash us right now. And I so know. Val could edit it. Class, yeah. well, that, that, that's later. That's, that's later. for the Patreon, Gail. That's for Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash TV. Well, ladies, yeah. um, I do hate this part oh, of the show, but we want to give a little... And do you no, know? I hate this part too. I hate it so much. We'll say a little quick goodbye. And maybe hey, we'll have I an after party. One thing too. Talk about one thing. Oh, yeah. I want to say congratulations to Mickey for coming yeah. back. And yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. You're a legend, girl. You're a legend. You are a legend. You are a legend. You are a legend. Mickey, you're a legend. Mickey. Yes. Yep. Yeah. The trifecta yeah. of the you. best wrestlers ever. I love you guys. I love you guys. Oh, this Val. Is the best episode ever. It was, yeah. And Val, you were telling us like on the episode before how you said that Mickey, myself, and Gail. You're my I trifecta forgot. of what I think are the best women's yeah. wrestling ever. And it's funny because I said that before we had you on the show. I swear to goodness, Gail, I said, if you don't yeah. believe me, go back to interviews years ago. 
this is my trifecta here. So I think you guys are the most well-respected, talented, <laughs> full-packaged ladies ever. I was like, so much. And I'm proud to be friends too. We are pretty <laughs> amazing. Yes. And then and I asked, all so are you three? really good matches with each other? Right? Yeah. 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 We have. Yeah. We have. Thank you so much for coming on. This was great. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. You're always welcome here. This will not be your last time on golf. Uh -huh. No. no. So we yeah, to that come to running. my house so we can have a pool party. <gasps> yes. Wouldn't that be so oh fun? Pool party? Yeah. 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 Over, let's do it. Can you come totally. from the UK? Yeah. As long as Miss Rona doesn't ruin everything. Come to my house. Let's do it. Well, cheers to Gail. We love you. We're going to have you back. We love you I so much. We'll see you soon. Love you. Everybody, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And of course, you'll see more of Gail Kim on our show because we love her so much. Follow all of us on social media and don't forget to join patreon.com slash TV. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. This is the word to go, y'all.